Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyan Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah Continuing on with our brief look at Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyum's discussion about Tawakal al-Allah that was translated by one of our brothers Abbas Abu Yahya Hafizullah Ta'ala We reached a portion where Shaykh al-Islam mentioned about those groups of Ahl al-Bid'ah that speak about Tawakal and they do not have true tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And we also mention that as the ulama say, a tawakkul huwa i'timad ala Allah wa fi'la asbab. That tawakkul on Allah, relying on Allah, putting our trust in Allah, means to put all of our affairs with Allah while taking actions or following the correct means to fulfill that wish of whatever we're trying to do. For example, as we've mentioned countless times, if someone wants uh, wants employment, they don't just sit in the, in the masjid and say, well, I'm making tawakkal on Allah, and they're supplicating to Allah. Although some brothers have this understanding, but this is a khata, this is a mistake. But rather, tawakkal on Allah is putting their trust solely in Allah and striving, going out to find work, to find employment, to go out to collect firewood and sell it, to go out and sell, gather your incense and oils for a very cheap price and go and sell it amongst the people. Or whatever the case may be, but the point being that they search for the risk. They go out and they make effort for their risk. And this is the true tawakal that they're putting their trust solely in Allah and they're striving to attain that. So Ibn al-Qayyum, he mentioned, Rahmatullah he said, so look at the grave matters that denial of the means of asbab leads to, and it leads a person to declaring it is forbidden to supplicate with something which Allah has praised his pious servants for supplicating with and seeking. So meaning that the, the, those people who deny that you should take action to achieve uh, your goals. So if you want to get married, that you actually strive to get married. I guess you uh, either you go talk to families as a man, you go talk to families uh, in search of trying to find a wife or the various other means. Maybe you involve yourself in the websites, you, you, you uh, try to gain a wife in that way or whatever the situation you go to the imam of your local community and you try to to find you ask him that you want to uh, get married this is fi'la asbab this is taking the means to achieve the ends which is getting married but it's not just sitting in the masjid and just praying only and supplicating to Allah day and night without making effort to achieve that without making effort to get married so there are those sects and those groups who deny this, who deny the asbab. And this is what you find from some of the extreme Sufis and those people who have, have, uh, make, uh, have mistakes in their itaqad and in their understanding of the meaning of tawakal. That you find that they make no effort and they say, I'm going to make hajj. But they don't work for it. They don't... Uh, do anything, they don't even ask people for money or whatever the situation is, they don't make effort to, to achieve those ends and they believe that they're going to uh, get that and that, and that that's soul to walk Allah Allah. But to Allah Allah is fi'la al-asbab, i'timad al-Allah wa fi'la al-asbab. It's relying and putting your trust all in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while taking the means to, uh, to gain that. So then he mentions, so the Muslims have never ceased from the time of their Prophet ﷺ until this time supplicating with this supplication and it's one of the most excellent of supplications. And it's mentioned in the Qur'an and this is the, in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبَّنَا لَا تُعَخِذْنَا إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَعْنَا O Allah, O, o our Lord, do not bring us, do not hold us to account if we forget or if we make a mistake. 
So this is it's beautiful. It shows the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows that the slave is relying upon Allah and asking Allah to overlook his mistakes. And those things he has he's done from out of mistake or he has done uh, out of forgetfulness. And that shows the mercy in the Sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hold us to account for those things in which we forgot and those things which we uh, have uh, done mistakenly. Bi'idnillah. And then Ibn al-Qayyim said, then the reply to this futile delusion, meaning the delusion of those who, who deny this ayat, this meaning and, and, and relying upon Allah is to say there is a third case other than the two cases that you have mentioned and it is the true reality. This is that it was decreed that something would come about when it means tawakkul and supplication are present. So supplication or tawakkul are made two means for the attainment of what is desired. As we mentioned, fi'l asbab and tawakkul. So Allah decreed that it would come about when the servant carried out its means. So if he does not perform the means, then the result will not occur. This is just like his decreeing a child for a man if he has intercourse with a woman who can bear a child. If he does not have intercourse, then a child will not be created. Also, he decreed a man's being filled if he eats and having his thirst quenched if he drinks. But if he does not do so, then he will not be full, nor will his thirst be quenched. Likewise, he decreed the fulfillment of Hajj and reaching Mecca for one who, uh, who journeys and takes the road to it. But if he sits in his house, he will not reach Mecca. So this is as we were mentioning. So Ibn al-Qayyim was mentioning uh, different examples. He said, likewise, he decreed entry into paradise for those who accept Islam and carry out the righteous deeds. But if he abandons Islam and does not perform uh, righteous deeds, then he will not enter paradise. Likewise, he decreed that food would be cooked due to fire being placed beneath it. Likewise, he decreed that crops should grow through their being cultivated by furrowing the earth and planting the seeds uh, in it. So if that is not done, then it will come to nothing. So this shows us that we have to make effort to achieve our ends. That's what the whole shahid, the whole point Ibn al-Qayyim is trying to drive home and trying to, and it's a refutation of those people who have other uh, concepts of tawakkul. Then he said, so according to the saying of those who deny the means of all these means should be abandoned, then instead of that, one should just say, if it has been decreed for me and ordained since eternity, then I will receive a child, become full, have my thirst quenched, perform hajj, and so on. Then this must come to pass whether I act or not, whether I marry or not, whether I travel or sit in my house. If that has not been decreed for me, then I will not attain it, whether I act or not. And even, ahabatifillah, well, you have to be careful, and I know people from Ahl Sunnah that make mistakes with this, that have a mistake and make mistakes with this. In their, they, they tend to belittle, they say, this is what my Lord has decreed for me. Yes, this is what your Lord has decreed for you. But did you make effort? Did you make effort, and do you make effort? I know brothers who are tested with poverty, and they say, this is what my Lord has decreed for me. And we say, yes, your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you this. But at the same time, you did not make effort to, uh, to go seek employment. Or you did not try all the means to try to find halal means of earning. So yes, your Lord decreed for you that and decreed for you that you would have this laziness. Not that you're like a puppet, but in fact you had the, and have the ability to make the effort. And then the natija, the end result, is with Allah Azza wa Jal. It's very important for us to have this concept and understand the qadr, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, Then would such a person be counted as one having intellect? Are not the animals better possessing of understanding than him? Since the animals strive to carry out the means due to the universal and general guidance. So this is general hidayah that Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about. It's a guidance that even the animals, it's from their fitra, from their nature, that they... They strive. If the, the lion wants to eat, he never he just doesn't sit in the grass and sleep all day, but he hunts. He hunts to find his prey. The hyena likewise uses his scent of smell and goes out to find uh, whatever he can to scavenge. Or he may attack a prey in order to fill his belly because he makes effort. 
So to walk is one of the greatest means through which that which is desired is realized and through which that which is hated is repelled. So one who denies the means, then his tawakal will not be sound and upright. However, from the completion of tawakal is that one does not place reliance upon the means and that one disconnects his heart from them. So his heart is in a state of having reliance upon a law whilst his body carries out the means. This is absolutely a very important uh, point that we want to mention that Sheikh Islam Ibn Al-Qayyum mentioned and Sheikh Islam also uh, Ibn Taymiyyah also mentioned this that of the types of battle uh, that some of the people of falsehood uh, do is some people that they go to the extreme of putting all of their trust in the thing that they're doing in their means and then they don't put their trust in a law so you don't want to go to either extreme. You don't want to be on the extreme where you just say, I'm relying on a law and I'm going to make uh, a, a million dollars. But you don't strive, you don't have a business plan, you don't make effort. That's one extreme. The other extreme is those people who make every effort but they put all their trust and they believe that they're in. For sure, I'm going to, my plan is going to be successful, my business is going to be successful, I'm going to do this, I'm going to marry the, the beautiful woman, I'm going to achieve this, I'm going to achieve whatever I'm trying, to, my goal, I'm going to get my PhD, I'm going to get this whatever, and I, I've been making all this effort for sure, I'm putting in there, put their heart into that. Doesn't mean you're totally devoid, that you're not going to uh, have positive attitude and so forth. No, but we're talking about those people who put all of their trust in their means. You know, I've made all the effort. I should get that. I, sh I will attain this. I will attain such and such after one year. Okay, this person, they haven't put their trust in a law, but rather they put their trust in means, in the means. And sometimes this can be lead to a person to shirk, so that's why we have to be careful. So the means are there with Allah's wisdom and in accordance with his commands in his religion. And a tawakkul is connected to his lordship and his ordainment and decree. So worship, servitude, al ubudiyah along with the means, will not be established except when founded upon tawakkul. Nor will tawakkul be established except built upon servitude, worship, and the law, the one free of all imperfections, and the Most High knows best. So this is a beautiful uh, point Sheikh al-Islam mentioned. And we'll end there, and then we'll continue on in the uh, next sitting, and we'll probably wrap it up in one or two more uh, sittings. Bi idnillah ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq, and bless us to be of those who have ilm and nafirist and tayyib wa amil and mutaqabbilin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with jannah of redos and forgive us of our many, many mistakes. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.